Hey, what's up guys? The Strong Boys 19 here. It is time for me to return into Pink Floyd's discography and for this one I'm going to be talking about Atom Heart Mother. This is the band's fifth studio album and this is the only Pink Floyd album I have from my CD collection, which is a blast for me for many of you, really, but I promise I will buy the great Floyd albums for my collection. So, this is the follow-up to their mishmash album, in my opinion, entitled Umaguma, even though I really liked the live album from the previous release. And this is another Pink Floyd album that the band had been trying out new ideas to to really focus more onto their original sound. And the songwriting on this album is, in my opinion, much more in place and focused than Umaguma because there were some tracks from Umaguma that just fell quite flat and not that strong enough. Well, to me, on Atom Heart Mother, I think that this album does have some some good tracks. However, I think I will prefer this album better, obviously, than Umaguma, of course, but better than more and Saucer Full of Secrets. I know that's controversial for me to say that, but that's just what I think. And I think the results from Atom Heart Mother is a very underrated Pink Floyd release. And just like the band's reactions and thoughts from Umaguma, Pink Floyd absolutely hated it, especially David Gilmour and... Roger Waters. They despised this album with a passion and uh, I, I really don't understand because uh, some of the stuff on this album I really do enjoy a lot and even though it's not one of Pink Floyd's very best albums I think it's still a good album. So the title track, Atom Heart Mother, is 23 minutes long and it opens with a nice soft tone and as the song progresses there are some moments that the band includes some big brass sound and it does have some memorable melody when the, the big brass section comes in a few times during the progression of the track and the music on this album is more onto the focused progressive rock tone than the psychedelic sounds and the the track flows quite well and with the effects and some of the moments on the track are a bit weird to me and it is a six part composition and the parts uh, Father's Shout, Breast Milky, Mother 4, Funky Dong, Mind Your Throats Please, and Remergence. So the overall track I think is a good track, but it's never been one of my top favourite Pink Floyd songs. But I still manage to listen to it all the way through from beginning to end. The second track, If, I think this is the best song on the album. It's another Roger Waters composition and it's another psychedelic folk song and I really like this one. The, the sounds that have been produced so well are really good on this track with the soft acoustic guitar sound, Roger's voice and with the, the effects during David Gilmour's guitar so low here and there and I think it is another great soft acoustic Floyd track. The next track Summer 68 is another Richard Wright composition and this is in my opinion one of his best written compositions and the sound of his voice is quite great as well and the the whole track in general is quite at a 
uh, a positive setting for what I think, and it does have some good, uh, some good edges of the rhythm and just everything else. And I think it's a solid track to the album. The next track, Fat Old Sun, another acoustic driven track sung by David Gilmour this time, and Gilmour's voice had been really soft and mellow, just like the sound from Roger Waters' voice, and I think this is still a good track, and um, I think it's just a, not a really strong track, but it it did have some some strong delivery from how the song progressed and I would think that if is the better track than the other ones but yeah Fat Old Son I still enjoy that one and the last track Alan's Psychedelic Breakfast a Nick Mason track and I think this is the weakest song on the album and it's split into three parts and they are Rise and Shine, Sunny Side Up and Morning Glory and I totally respect Nick Mason for what he tried to really do for ideas to the the sound of Pink Floyd's instrumentation but to me I think Alan's Psychedelic Breakfast is just a big bore fest. It does have some audio sounds of um, uh, of dialogue and uh, the fade in and out effects uh, from the audio to Pink Floyd's music that's, you know, made together. Uh, to me, it was just uh, not a standout track to me and I never thought of it as one of the Floyd's best and well-written compositions. However, on the the second piece of instrumentation during Alan's Psychedelic Breakfast, which is um, which is Sunny Side Up, the music was a big, big surprise to me because it sounds very much similar to us and them. And it was a writing process uh, for us and them. And I cannot believe that a piece of music that was not going to be us and them, but it was going to be that track on a later Pink Floyd album included on this album. So it was just a big surprise to me. I, I just didn't expect it at all because it does have a really, really huge similar sound from the chords and the pacing. So that pace, Sunny Side Up, would become Us and Them from obviously the dark side of the moon. But yeah, Alan's Psychedelic Breakfast, I didn't like that one that much and I just did not care for it. The production of this album is actually quite great. I think the sound from the drums to the the orchestrations and the the whole sound from the band just worked really well. So I actually do like Atom Heart Mother than the first time I listened to it and it became a grower album to me. So in terms for an album rating, I am going to give Atom Heart Mother by Pink Floyd an 8 out of 10. Thank you guys for watching, and for this one, I am going to be finishing this off with the, the next Pink Floyd album review, entitled Metal. So, peace out guys, and thanks for watching.